Hey guys, it's Dan here with a new video and today we're going to be showing how to make metal be two-toned and still look like metal from one spray paint. As you can see, this catches light differently on these parts than it does to the main body part. So it all looks like metal, especially on camera, it looks really good. So we are going to show you how I did that and I did weathering on this. The prop itself isn't fully weathered all that much, but I mean, let's be realistic. Thor's had this for like five years now, so it's got to be a little bit weathered. So I weathered it a little bit more than the screen use prop just because I wanted to, and it still makes it look like metal. So let's get into the build. Okay, so now you have your parts to the point where they're almost done, and they just need one more layer of primer on them. We're going to take our threaded rod, which I quoted at the wrong size last time, but this size is 5 16 18 threads per inch, I'm pretty sure is what that means. And it's a two foot bar, but we're using less than a foot. So we're, or, well, right around a foot. And we're going to just cut it with a hacksaw to the right size or anything that you want to cut it with. And we're going to use super glue to glue all these pieces together this to this to this with the bar in the middle because I've found that the super glue I use is actually a stronger bond than epoxy when I was testing things a couple years ago. So on the parts that we're going to glue, we're going to sand a little circle around where each Part is going to get glued so we have plastic to plastic bonding. We're going to leave most of the primer showing so that way we can have pretty flat surfaces and all that but all the contacts are going to be right there with the glue. And then a quick wipe with some acetone to get rid of some powder. Make the gluing surface clean. Alright so we have words or rinds or whatever on this. And you can see how they're going down and it looks like this is sort of like English, like let's say that's S-T-R-M, something like that. So we want this to be facing up when we're making the Stormbreaker. This is the test piece. So if this is facing up, S-T-R-M, this longer piece is the bottom. This is mirrored on both sides, so if this is like this, we're going to glue like that. To get the threaded rod in there, we're going to be using Schaefer's Instacure Gap Filling. This is good for coating this and filling the gaps. We're going to shove it down in there, let it cure a little bit. We can spray the top so it's the top's always cured enough, and then we can glue all the other stuff together. So let's do that. All right, so since this entire surface is going to get glue on it, and this one is not, we're gonna apply the glue to this and the spray to this and then press it down. So we're gonna do that for the next pieces, and then we can fix it all up with some fillers and stuff and get it looking good. Okay, just like the runes are facing up right on this, we want the runes from this one to be facing upright. And this is always on the bottom. So we just line it up so that way the hole goes in there and it lines up like that, then we'll be good. But first, let's make sure it fits without cutting any of this off so we don't. So its depth is more than what we have, which is great. We're not going to spray this one. I'm going to put this on the table and push down. So this thing is made from multiple pieces of metal. 
you can do gap filling if you want to. You don't have to because it's fused by two pieces of metal in the movie. So you can go straight to doing the last pass of filling and sanding and priming, or you can just go straight into priming and painting. But we also have the end cap on, which is the last piece. We're gonna glue it on last because we're gonna finish all this stuff, then glue that on. So that way we don't have it getting roughed up when we're trying to glue this together. Yeah, so now that we have everything primed and it's all glued together and it's looking really smooth and we have lots of detail in there without really showing print lines, we are going to finally attach this piece and this piece is going to be polished with a cloth from a cutoff from a shirt or something, something cotton. I used paper towels before, but they create a bunch of dust. Uh, the t-shirts still create a little bit of dust, but we're gonna just make sure the full surface is smoothed up and polished and all that. You can do it to both pieces. And that's gonna get it ready for when we're gluing these two pieces together and we push down onto something soft, it's uh, gonna have a little more resilient texture, or at least it feels like it's more resilient. I don't fully know, but we're going to do it anyways. So let's get to that. So we're going to just do a quick before and after. Notice all the types of sheen that this has, how it's not too shiny, but all the lines look really good. And then I'm going to take a cloth cut off from a shirt, cotton shirt. I'm going to polish up all this and then we're going to look at it after. And as you can see, this is it polished up a little bit and it's got a little more sheen to all the points and the corners show more and it looks closer to what Metallica will look like. This is gonna make this a little more resilient but it's also gonna make it look a lot closer to what metal is once we put the metal paint on it. Okay, so for the last part, the last glue up we're gonna do for the hammerhead is we're gonna take some super glue. I'm probably gonna use the extra thick, not the gap filling medium, because this is actually a really close, tight fit. And it's very flush. There's not really any gaps that I need to fill. So I'm gonna just put it on there, places on, let it set by setting it down. So let's actually try doing it the opposite. We're going to put it on top visually from the other side. I'm just going to let this hold its own weight on there. So the last thing you're going to have to do is prime the very bottom of this and then everything and also fill in the thin cracks with a little bit of filler, but that's the last you do before you paint. I started painting the bottom so I could get that all prepped and then realized since it was laying sideways I would paint the sides but I forgot to dust off the surface so if you look really close there's a bunch of dust specks on the sides so I'm going to have to sand <laughs> this down even though it looks pretty good but I was te doing some testing and you might be able to tell that this part right here shines different than that part. They both still shine like metal, but this one shines a little darker. So that's just taking some paper towel and polishing out the metallic finish spray paint. So I'm going <laughs> to sand this a little one, one more time. Get all the dust off of it. Make sure the dust is off of it. Dust is your enemy, friends. Don't let dust get on your stuff. Then I'm going to paint it. Well, I just did a fresh coat, and I'm never going to get this dust off. It just keeps on slightly getting on there. If you guys have a dust-free environment, it's going to be for the best, but I'm just going to roll with it, and it's going to look fine. It's going to look like it's part of the metal once I get done with it anyway. So this is the paint right before it's dry, so let's let it dry out. The clear finish that helps metal stay looking like metal or the finishes 
is this. I mean, there's others too that are a little bit more expensive and you can use with airbrush. But you can see on this how it looks shiny. This side still looks shiny and it has like a mirror finish and stuff. So the bottom is definitely coated in this, but you can also tell that there's two different finishes. There's a shiny finish and a slightly less shiny finish. And this one looks a little darker when we put all the stuff on when we're done. So this looks like two different kinds of metals. And that's intentional because this one was polished with the cloth first and then we put the finish on. So we're going to stand this up. We did this so we could stand this up and paint the other side. But you can see others. Like you can see my hand in there. It's a really mirrored finish. It's really good. Just like this. See how my hands and both of them. So it still looks like metal. Now it should make more sense. So we put the finish on the bottom so that way that it wouldn't get rubbed off because this metallic spray paint is actually really, really delicate. You don't want to really touch it with anything. So wearing gloves and all that stuff. So we're going to be able to spray paint this side, let this all fully dry. Then we're going to do the polishing after it's dried for like a day or two. So when we're polishing the part that it's going to be darker, you can see that this paint is very uh, susceptible. So you can see my fingerprints there, but we're going to polish that out, so it's going to be fine. And you can see why we're going to need to be very careful with this, and then do a top coat immediately after we're done with this, and not touch any of the other parts with the gloves or fingers or anything like that. So just be really careful on this part. So in that last clip you saw me trying to polish up this area and not this area which for the paint I'm using is wrong so I had to repaint that side. As you can see right now this part looks a little bit whiter than this. This looks a little shinier but that's because I took a brush and put the Pledge Revive on it for gloss to protect it so that way when I'm going to take a paper towel and polish this area it's going to be easier not to scratch and scuff the paint because the paint's really delicate. So the next step is to actually take the paper towel and buff lightly these areas that are highlighted. So it's going to be this stripe, these accents, this little piece on there, this line's going down, the bottom, and then the base, you'll see it's going to be a little different. I'll show you when that's done. To do the pledge, you want to find a brush with bristles that are similar to this one, and you want it to be uh, something you can control, but also not like really fluffy brush. So you want it to be soft, but not hard. And these bristles, I like a lot. So I poured this into a cup, dipped it in, and painted it on very lightly. And you can see very clearly where it covered. So this is protecting it and this is not being protected so I can go and mess with this. And then I'm going to go over the entire thing once it's done with weathering and all that stuff and I'm doing all this. So it's gonna be protecting it. But you can see that it still has the metallic sheen and it looks just like metal. So it sort of changes the way it looks but it's one of the ones that's rated really well for keeping it to look like metal. So, I'm polishing this up. You can see that this looks different than this, which looks like different than this. This is the painted over with pledge to protect. This is not, this is not, this is polished with paint towel. So you just go lightly on it and it starts to shine up a little bit brighter. It changes the way it glows and all that stuff. That's what we're going for. So once this gets painted over, ignore the dishwasher, the clothes washer. But once this gets painted over with the pledge, it's gonna look different than this also, and it's all gonna look closer to the actual product. When you're brushing on the pledge, sometimes it's gonna get splotchy and bubbly. You for the bubbles, you can let them dry for a little bit and then take the brush and just brush them out. Or for these splotches, uh, for the last time I did this, it just goes away. So 
it looks nerve wracking, but I'm pretty sure that that's going to be just fine. So let's see if I'm still right. But as you can see, after doing all the pledge minus the splotchiness, it still is super reflective and looks like metal. The final step that you do for weathering and making it look more like metal is we're going to be taking some shoe shine, the Kiwi brand, and this is black and it looks slightly brownish on the metal when you do it. And if there's too much, it looks a little blue. So just wipe it away, it looks a little blue. So we're gonna just take it off, take off the cap, squeeze, push, just apply it like you normally do. Then you're gonna just take a paper towel after the entire thing is soaked in it, you're gonna take a paper towel and just wipe it off. And don't wipe too hard, you wanna wipe softly. Now, one thing to note, the paint and both of these things. This has to be really dry for this to go on. This has to be really dry for that shoe polish to go on. So you guys really just need to make sure that you wait a long time between doing all these steps. That's the reason this video took so long. I mean, just painting it took so long for these videos to come out just because this stuff is like, uh, it's like prima donna. You have to wait really long for it to get really dry or else you're just gonna create fingerprints in it and smudge it and it's just gonna be a nightmare. So that's a pre-warning. If you have other ways to do it that's quicker, like airbrush with a little bit more expensive materials, go for that because that's actually gonna work probably just the same, but look really good. Well, as far as actually making the weathering, I went a little further than the, the actual prop itself, but I think it looks good on camera. It looks good in real life. And let's be honest, Thor's had this for five years, so or five years or so, so it's gonna be a little weathered. So this is what it looked like after the fact. You see that there's a highlights and low lights. So the highlights are from the metal itself. The low lights are from where it fills in all the gaps and like the texture of the paint itself gets caught. And you can see details a little better. Like these lines pop a little more. Everything just looks more like actual, I know it's not iron or steel or anything like that. It's some metal that they have on a dwarf star, but like you can certainly tell the difference between the two colors still. So it didn't mask that. So that's good. And yeah, so sorry I didn't get a video of me doing this. As you can tell from the air conditioner in my house, there's just a lot of machine noises and it's hard for me to like actually talk without just being overrun by just noises, you know? All right, so that's it. We got this thing finished. So let's look at the uh, next steps for this in the next video. All right, just in case I didn't talk about this, to do the pledge, you just take a brush like this. I'm pretty sure I talked about this, but you brush it on, you get it all soaked and you get it all in there. And if you want to do that before and after for different layers of metal, that's fine. But I think that it works a lot better if you just get this on there and make sure all the bubbles are gone and you can do multiple coats. So as long as you do multiple coats of this, it's going to protect it well. If you do more than two, there's a chance that the film's going to get thicker and thicker and it's going to look less and less like metal. So just be cautious. If you do one, it'll look the closest to the metal, but it will also be the least amount of protection and it's a little easier to scratch. But if you do two, I found that two is actually a pretty good amount. So this prop's turning out really good. It's looking amazing. And the next step is going to be attaching it to the handle. And that should be the final video for the Stormbreaker itself. But as far as this whole video series is concerned, you have to wait for the video after that to see where the costume is going to be going. So I bet you can take a couple guesses. There's a couple costumes that might go along with this prop. So look forward to that. And if you want to have more information on stuff like this or see videos early, you can see my Patreon. See these people? If they get benefits, you can check it out, but they get to see videos early. They get to chat with me and talk about stuff. And if you're on there, you get more benefits. So look at that. And if you look over here, you'll see some videos that I make. I might be making stuff or doing parkour or something like that. If you look over here, here's my name and here's my Patreon link in case you're too lazy to click the one in the description below. Other than that, I look forward to the next build with you guys.